Projectile motion is a lot of what we've already seen with kinematics. Now we're just going to be combining some things. So I think you'll probably find this a little bit easier since you have seen all of these equations before. What is projectile motion? It's just the motion of an object shot through the air. So anytime you have a projectile, it's going to travel a path that looks something like this. And this is what would be referred to as the trajectory. So it's got that arc, arc, can't talk today, um, where it's going to go up and come back down. It's got constant velocity in the x direction. So what that means, if you were to draw a diagram, so let's say this is a ball. I'll make these a little bit bigger. So this is a ball being shot through the air. And then it's going back down. In the x direction, you're going to have constant velocity. So if we're drawing the speed lines, we want the same amount of speed lines the whole time to show that horizontally it's moving at the same speed. In the y direction, it's got a constant acceleration. And that acceleration is the free fall acceleration, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So as the ball would go up, it would be getting slower. In the y direction, it comes to rest, and then as it comes down, it's going to get faster. So, free fall in the y, constant velocity in the x. And trajectory, as I said, is just what you would call the path traveled by a projectile. So if you see that word, it's referring to this arch. Okay, how to solve projectile motion problems. First thing you want to do is divide the motion into the horizontal and vertical. So I'm going to call this the xy chart. Anytime you're writing a problem, this would be your given find. So you would make a chart that looks just like this, xy, uh, write what you know in the x. So like, let's say you knew delta x equals whatever. Um, if you know your speed in the x, I call that vx equals whatever. You always know that acceleration in the x is equal to zero. And then whatever you knew in the y. So let's say you knew what the delta y was, you would write what delta y was. You know that acceleration in the y is always going to be the free fall acceleration, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. So your xy chart, right, what you know in the x direction, what you know in the y direction. Uh, the horizontal motion, as I said, is exactly that of constant velocity. So that's where this acceleration equals zero. And the vertical motion is exactly that of an object in free fall. So that's this acceleration equaling negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Number four is the important one. Horizontal and vertical motion are connected by time. So the time it takes to hit the ground is the same vertically and horizontally. So you know that what connects these two is time. So time is the same in both the x and the y. So let's do an example. A stone is thrown horizontally at a speed of 5.0 meters per second from the top of a cliff 78.4 meters high. We want to know in part A, how long does it take the stone to hit the ground? Part B, how far from the base of the cliff does the stone hit the ground? And part C, what are the horizontal and vertical components of the velocity right before it hits the ground? So let's draw a diagram of what's happening. Here's our cliff. The stone is being thrown horizontally, and then it's going to hit the ground. So we know in the x velocity is constant. I want to show that with the speed lines. We know in the y acceleration is constant, so it's going to be getting faster as we go down. x, y chart. And this is, as I said, our given find. We know that it's thrown horizontally. So that's an initial x velocity. I'm using the subscript x just so that I don't get confused between the x's and the y's. So we have an initial x velocity of 5 meters per second. It tells us that the cliff is 78.4 meters high. So from here to the ground is 78.4 meters. Since the stone is going down, that means my delta y has to be negative. So delta y is negative. 78.4 meters. We know acceleration in the x is zero. You don't have to add this, I just usually do to remind myself. And we know that acceleration in the y is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, 
We also know in the y direction, the stone is at the top of its path. At the very top of its path, in the y direction, it's at rest. So V initial in the y equals zero. And what are we looking for? It's asking in part A, time, how long does it take? So I usually just put that right in the middle. In part B, how far from the base of the cliff? So we're looking for delta x. And in part C, the horizontal and vertical components of the final velocity. So we're looking for v final in the x, that's really easy, and v final in the y. So let's start with part A. Just a reminder of the three kinematic equations. Delta x equals 1 half a t squared plus v initial t. v final equals v initial plus a t. And the no time equation, v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2 a delta x. And if we're in the y direction, the a changes to g and the x changes to y. So looking at part A, it's asking us how long does it take the stone to hit the ground? Based on what we're given, in the x direction, we only know v initial. In the y direction, we know v initial, delta y, and acceleration. So the only equation that has the three things that we need, um, sorry, the three relevant informations to find the fourth thing would be this one. So in part A, I'm just going to use a little note to myself that this is the vertical. It would be great if I could spell. So in part A, we're going to look in the vertical. And we're going to use the first equation. So in the vertical, this becomes delta y equals 1 half a. I'm going to put a little y, t squared, plus v initial y, t. And the reason I use the y is, again, to remind myself that I'm using the y direction. The initial velocity in the y is 0, so my only unknown now is t. Isolating for t, we get 2 delta y over a equals t squared. 2 times my delta y, negative 78.4 meters, divided by negative 9.8 meters per second squared equals t squared. Okay, so 2 times negative 78.4 gives me negative 156.8 meters divided by negative 9.8 meters per second squared. This is an even 16 seconds squared equaling t squared. Square root of 16 we already know is 4 equals t. So my answer for part a with two sig figs, my time is about, not about, sorry, my time is exactly equal to 4.0 seconds. Okay, so now let's look at part B. B is asking how far from the base of the cliff does the stone hit the ground? So we're looking for delta x, it's going to make sense to work in the horizontal. And the only relevant equation would be delta x equals vxt. And the reason I say that, there's no acceleration. So v final equals v initial plus at, and the no time equation won't work when you're working in the horizontal. So the only equation you'll need to use in the horizontal is delta x equals vxt because this is constant velocity. And we haven't seen constant velocity for a while. So, delta x equals my v in the x direction, this is 5 meters per second, times the time I found in part a, 4 seconds, delta x equals 20 meters. Two sig figs, delta x equals 2.0 times 10 meters. Horizontal is always the easiest one to work with, again, because it is only this equation that you'll end up using. And now let's look at part C. So part C wants to know the horizontal and vertical components of the velocity right before it hits the ground. Well, v final x is 
easy because it's the same as your v initial in the x. Because it's constant velocity, your v final x is just equal to that initial x velocity. So v final x equals v initial x, 5 meters per second. Okay, the vertical component, we're going to look back in the vertical, and you'll find that I always label what I'm working with in terms of vertical or horizontal. We know the time, we know the v initial, we know the acceleration, and we know the delta y. So it doesn't matter what equation we use. I'm going to choose v final equals v initial plus a t. v initial in the y is 0. So v final in the y is just equal to the acceleration times time. So negative 9.8 meters per second squared times 4 seconds. And this equals negative 39.2 meters per second, negative because the stone is going down. With two sig figs, v final is approximately negative 39 meters per second. And that's it. So you're just using the same three equations. The only difference now is that you're breaking them apart into the x and the y components. Uh, the main thing you need to remember is that time is going to be the same for both. So the time it takes to hit the ground horizontally is the same time it takes to hit the ground vertically. And just make sure that you're remembering constant velocity in the x, constant acceleration of free fall in the y. I'll do one more quick example if you want to see it. Otherwise, if you feel OK, you can stop here. OK, so second example, you accidentally throw your car keys horizontally at 8 meters per second from a cliff 64 meters high. How far from the base of the cliff should you look for your keys? So we'll start by drawing a diagram. Cliff, very similar to the last one. Keys were shot off horizontally. We have constant velocity in the x, constant acceleration in the y. For my xy chart, I know the keys were shot horizontally, so my vx is 8 meters per second, and I know the cliff is 64 meters high. Because the keys are going down, delta y is a negative 64 meters. I also know acceleration in the y is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, and that the keys in the y direction start from rest, so v initial y is 0 meters per second. And acceleration in the x is 0. We are looking for how far from the base of the cliff should you look for your keys, so that would be delta x. In order to find delta x, I need the time. In order to find time, I need to work in the vertical. So looking in the vertical, I've got delta y, acceleration, and v initial. I'm looking for time. So I'm going to use the first equation. Delta x equals 1 half a t squared. This should be y. Delta y equals 1 half a t squared plus v initial y t. That goes away. 2 delta y over acceleration equals t squared. 2 times negative 64 meters divided by negative 9.8 meters per second squared equals t squared. So 2 times negative 64 is negative 128. Divided by negative 9.8, we get 13.06, keeps on going, second squared equaling t squared. Square root of that number. 3.61, keeps on going, seconds is equal to the time. Not what I'm looking for, so need to use that number in the horizontal. So going over to the horizontal. Only equation in the horizontal is delta x equals velocity times time. So this equals the velocity of 8 meters per second times my unrounded number 3.614 keeps on going seconds. Multiplying those together we get 28.91 keeps on going meters with, we've got two sig figs again, delta x is approximately 29 meters. So although this problem didn't blatantly tell you that you needed to use the y or find anything in the y, 
you had to use the y direction in order to figure out time to figure out your delta x. And you'll see that as a common theme when it comes to projectile motion problems, where it's not going to be explicitly stated that you need to find this in order to find this, but just knowing that the time connects the two, you'll be able to work through the problems.